Hello, I'm Riaz Yar, and this is my lovely patient, Claire. Thank you for joining us at this session. We're going to be talking about the digital sleep workflow using Dentsply Serona Prime Scan and the Panthera sleep devices. So, sleep disordered breathing. This is an amazingly interesting discipline, and it's really been brought to the fore today. And we're going to be decoding that for you. So, why is it important? Well, the NICE guidelines published on the 20th of August this year have really brought general dental practitioners into the forefront of screening patients. So really, we have an important role here and it helps us provide comprehensive healthcare. So this is the collapse of the unsupported pharyngeal airway. That's what it is. And it's characterized by snoring, daytime sleepiness. It's a low mood poor concentration. These are all factors that we will see in our patients that give us an indication that they've got some sleep disordered breathing. They're going to feel unrefreshed when they wake up. They even wake up with headaches. Some patients have temporomandibular pain. They get clicks and noises from their joints. They also have some limited movement. There's also dental issues such as parafunction and there's a bifunctional link between periodontal disease and sleep disordered breathing. What are the risk factors? Obesity, so being overweight. Lifestyle issues like smoking and excessive alcohol. Poor sleep hygiene, taking your mobile to bed. That will certainly affect your sleep. Having a neck circumference greater than 16 inches puts weight on your neck when you're asleep and therefore restricts the airway. Gender, so males are a greater risk. But interestingly, females at menopause that risk is neutralized, so we have equal risk. There's also some craniofacial restrictions, such as the nasal airway, and genetics, so close family links. So what happens if the risks are not being managed? The risk is to the patient's heart. They're gonna get a myocardial infarction, high blood pressure. There's risk of heart failure. There's also risk of a stroke, diabetes, dementia, and there's also increased cancer risk. And these are all evidence-based and quite serious. So what's your role? So that's interesting, we have a role now. So our screening role is to provide an Epworth sleepiness scale, and that's not just by itself, it's married up with the stop bang. What is the Epworth sleepiness scale? It's a questionnaire, eight questions, and it's scored. The total number of points is 24, and they answer the questions, and it looks at their daytime sleepiness. Anything above 11 means an unusual level of sleepiness. Stop bang focuses on the BMI and their weight. Anything over 35 puts them at high risk. You put these two together, you're able to then refer. You're also gonna look at the Mal and Petty score. So airway anatomical factors to see if there's any other risk. If you're gonna refer then, you can refer to the sleep clinic, you can refer to the GP. That's if they will accept your referral. Otherwise, you can do a private referral to an ENT or sleep consultant. So how do we manage these patients? We want to reverse the risk factors. So we want them to reduce their weight, and that has a greater impact on the rest of their health as well. We look at their sleep hygiene, we look at how they sleep, so we're giving them a lot of advice so that they can do that at home. If they are categorized as having mild, moderate, or severe sleep apnea, then they're going to be provided with a continuous positive airway pressure device, a CPAP machine. But that really is restrictive. It doesn't look great, but it really will help their, uh, their sleep disordered breathing. So what dictates that is patient choice. There's quite a few patients who refuse to wear that CPAP machine, but they need to be treated for their sleep disordered breathing. And also mild or asymptomatic snorers aren't given a choice of treatment on the NHS. So this is where general dental practitioners can really play an important role and we can provide them with a mandibular advancement device. And that's designed to bring the mandible forward and open the airway. So what we're gonna do, Claire's gonna help me, we're gonna go through the clinical workflow and show you how scanning, taking a bite registration, and sending the device to Panthera, and how to fit that device, and how simple that workflow is. Okay, let's get started. 
I'm going to lie clear back. And let's get ready. Okay, so we will have done a clinical examination. We will have looked at her temporomandibular joint, assessed intraorally for any other issues. So all dental factors will have been looked at. What we're doing now is the actual assessment for measuring her mandibular advancement. So we will use a George gauge for that. And it has two components to it. It has a fork and it has the screw appliance block. This screw appliance block has two screws. It has a top and a lower version and it allows us to move both forks like that. So I'll show you how we do that. So first part, we're going to get the George gauge and we're going to attach it to the lower incisors. Now, if they have a orthodontic retainer, it's not a major issue. You can move this around until it fixes to the lower incisors and then you tighten the lower screw. So now we have that one ready and fixed. We'll place the upper fork in and what I'm checking for for the upper fork is it's going to fit this arch and there's different sizes and different thicknesses for the vertical dimension. So we're using white, which is a five millimeter increase in vertical dimension. And I'm gonna just check that the arch fits on that and keeping the center line straight. So that fits nicely. A few things that we're gonna look for, we're gonna ask the patient to open really nice and wide and close. I'm gonna ask her to move her jaw forward and back and what I'm looking for is to see if the mandible deviates as she move, moves protrusively. This is really important. So I'm looking at the lower center line and the upper center line and seeing if it deviates from that because I need to be aware of that. We want to make sure it's straight so both joints are moving healthily together. If there's a deviation then there may be some other signs going on. So there may be some muscular, some joint signs. So we need to look at that and make sure they're, they're, they're treated. In this case here, Claire moves beautifully straight forward. So this is quite a straightforward case to, to assess and, mark and record. So we're gonna place the fork, the upper fork and the lower fork together. Now the top screw is loose, so it allows for freedom. So I'm gonna place that on the lower incisors. I'm gonna ask it just to bite on her back teeth. Open again and bite on your back teeth there. So I'm just gonna record that there. Open again for me slightly. Well done. So I'm just gonna move that back a little bit there and in and bite together. Just normally on your back teeth, that's it, good. Good, open for me now. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna now look at actually measuring how she moves protrusively. Okay, so we're gonna place this in the right place. So on the lowers and just bite together on the back teeth. Yep, yeah, on the back, that's it, good. Okay, so we have a numbers on this gauge and when she's biting on her back teeth, it measures at four. So what I'm gonna ask her to do now is move her jaw to maximum protrusion. So slide your jaw forward, maximum, and back again. And we're gonna repeat that and I'm gonna look at what her numbers is and on maximum protrusion. So she is moving approximately nine millimeters from ICP to maximum protrusion. And we want to use 60% of that. So nine, 60%, we're gonna ask her to move about five millimeters. So I can fix that open for me. So she moved from four to, to nine. So we'll just simply reduce that by three millimeters and I'll actually screw that down so that means I've actually measured her protrusion 60% of her maximum. And I'm gonna place this in again, and then she's just gonna bite into that position. And now she's in 60% of her maximum protrusion. So we're gonna leave this for a couple of minutes. The reason for that is we want to check whether this position is actually comfortable for her. Because if she's gonna be in this position wearing the splint, the sleep device, and it's causing a pain, we need to reduce that protrusion. So she's then too far forward. So we'll leave that for a couple of minutes and then we'll ask Claire, how does it feel? 
If she's getting any pain in the muscles or in the joints, then we need to reduce that so that a maximum protrusion is not as far forward. If we're happy with that, open for me, we're going to record that position. Now I'll record it first, so I have that position recorded on this device, and then we'll go on to the digital scan and then how to record the byte. So how we do that, using byte registration paste. Now there are certain speeds of this, so this one is fast set, super fast is too much. Now because we're doing it digitally, we only need to apply a small amount of material. So I will just place a small amount on the posteriors. On the upper and lower ver end of the fork. And a little bit just to hold the incisor position there. Okay, so open for me there. Put it on the low incisors and then bite together for me now in that position. Good, and I'm making sure the mandible moved smoothly and kept straight. And we're just gonna wait for that to set. So now we've recorded her mandibular position. Once this is set, I'll simply keep that to one side and then we're gonna digitally scan Claire. Keep a little check on that. Okay, excellent. Good, open for me now. So now I'll just remove this gently. Good. And what you'll notice straight away is you have the markings of the upper and lower teeth. Now I'll just place that to one side. When I'm taking scanning and using the prime scan, I just want to make sure that the cheeks are nice and pliable. How many teeth have we got? So she does have her eights. So we've got to make sure we're going to scan the eights as well. We'll talk about the Panthera device and what options we have with that with regards to wisdom teeth. So I like to use an Optigate. So size wise, you have small, regular and large. Claire will be happy to know she's small. All right, so we'll place this in between the lips and cheeks. Just relax your lips for me, fantastic. There we go, brilliant. So just relax your lower lip and relax your upper lip. I'm just gonna drop it in there, perfect. Good. Well done. Good, okay. So now we have some retraction. I like to use some tissue paper and a mirror. So what I'll do is I'll dry the teeth. This is my tips of how I do intraoral scanning. So I don't like to use a three in one. I just simply get the patient to bite together on tissue, bite together, open for me, bite together. Well done, stay biting for me. So we're gonna now move to the scanning. So I'm gonna bring the prime scan into play. We will have already input the patient details and we've already selected splint and we're going to select next. Open for me now, well done. Now you have a choice of which way you can scan first, open nice and wide, fantastic. So I like to scan upper jaw first, so holding the prime scan correctly. You will notice that starts flashing white and then it goes to blue. So I'll do the occlusal surfaces first, both the all the occlusals, so I'll simply just run along all the occlusal surfaces and I'm looking at the camera, keeping it a distance apart. I'm just looking at occlusal, just a little wider for me. Good, and then I'm going to rotate and do palatal and come back again. Fantastic. Now, with the splint, you do need to have three millimeters or more of soft tissue. So this is important, you don't need the full palette. Good, and then just relax your cheek for me there. I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit there. Good, perfect. Well done. Beautiful. Okay, so we do need a bit more soft tissue there, you can see, I'm just getting capturing more soft tissue. Now, when I come to do the other side, again, just relax the cheek, I wanna get the occlusal, because it's gonna stitch it together using the head of the camera, you can actually act as retraction as well. I love that about the, the camera head, the prime scan, it really does. It means I don't have to use a mirror. 
Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just quickly check the scan, make sure I'm happy with the details that I have. Any areas that need recapturing, you see a little bit on the palatals just needed there. And first scan, I mean, the eights are going to be difficult, so we need to try and get the eights, but that's pretty much first time. And that is what happens all the time. It's very predictable. So I just want to scan the palatals of the five and four. So I'm just going to go back in there and just capture that a little bit there. And then I'm going to go back to the eight. So I'm going to just hold the cheek out of the way just so I can get right into that there. Good, perfect. And same on this side. Just relax your cheek a little bit and close a little bit for me just so I can get that eight. Okay. Perfect. Now onto the lower jaw. Now you can edit the model in the next stage if you need to, but we have lower jaw now. So back in again with the tissue. Right again. Well done. Right again. Perfect. And that just absorbs any water. So we get a really nice clean scan. Okay, so nice and wide for me now. I'm just going to rotate that happens. Okay. So again, occlusal surfaces. So in the lower arch, there's no lower left eight. You'll see there's an orthodontic retainer. Okay, so perfect. Buckle, I'm gonna rotate it around. Remember we need a couple of millimeters of soft tissue, at least three millimeters. Beautiful. Good. Well done. Just relax your cheek a little bit there. Now I'm going to rotate it. Just relax your tongue. Perfect. Okay, so I just need to do a little bit of a scan on the lingual of the sevens and the six there. Maybe try and get a better scan of the buckle of the seven and that's it. So we've nailed it pretty much first time. I'm just going to dry it again. Well done, right again for me. Open, open now, well done. So just those little areas that I need, which is the seven and the six. So let's just recapture those. So I'm going to use the mirror now just to keep the tongue out of the way. Perfect. Let's get the lower six there. Perfect. And then I'm just going to retract that cheek there. Beautiful. Okay, perfect. Now, this is the important stage now. We're going to do the scanning of the bite. So I've done upper and lower jaw scan. I'm just going to move to buckle bite. So now what we're going to do is place the George gauge already in, and she's going to automatically go to that position. Bite again for me now. That keeps her in that protrusion. And I'm going to do buckle bite both left and right sides. Good. One side. Premolars I use. Perfect. And we're done. We can take this out now, open for me, well done. Put that to one side, and we simply click the next button. So I'll put the model together, and we're gonna go through the stages of planning and designing the stent, the splint, and we're gonna go through the Connect software as well. Okay, so we now have the model on the screen. So I will now get ready to edit that. And you see how easy this is to do. So we have the model. So you'll just select the edit model button and you have the cut section. So we'll just move this so I can just cut away some excess tissue. So 
Certainly the lingual tissues I like to get rid of. I like a tidy model. And some excess of this buccal tissue. Just trim that away. So that's the lower model done. You can move to the upper model. Just need to get rid of some excess tissue here, you can see. I'll just get rid of this little excess around the eight. And you'll, you'll see when we come to the Panthera portal, how we can choose whether to have the wisdom teeth involved or not. I'm just gonna trim this slight excess away here. We still need to keep three millimeters of the tissue, so that is important. Yeah, I'm just trimming away around the back there. Good. So now I'm gonna press the connect button. So that's gonna take us to the connect portal. On your case connect, you will have chosen Panthera as your favorite recipient. So that will be already in the uh, connect software. So I'm just gonna press login. So your password should all be saved. I always remember to click the remember me button. And it's gonna upload the dental case to the case connect software. And we're gonna enter in the order details. So you'll select the next tab on the bottom. You need to follow, it says, wherever there's sort of yellow icons, which mean they're important data. So female, for example, here. We're gonna select the Panthera Dental Lab. Any additional instructions and a return date, so a week or so from now, for example. We can then, don't need to anonymize, and you can then add to cart. If you've got any other things that you need to do, you can do it at this stage. But I will add to cart and then submit. Once we submit it, it's gonna ask you to put your password back in again to commission the device. That now has been sent to the Panthera inbox. So now you can open up your Panthera account, which you'll have a password, a user ID. In that, that gives you a lot of flexibility to choose and design what device you want. Now, a lot of the time you can leave a lot of those choices to Panthera to make for yourself, as you get more and more experienced, you're gonna to want to pick and choose certain elements. So we'll go to the Panthera account. I've already logged in, as you can see. And so we're gonna select new order. So it's the big yellow cross. And we've got some choices. So we're gonna choose, we're looking at sleep, and you'll see that there's actually several choices there. You've got the DSA device, device and the Panthera X3. One is an interlock device and one allows a little bit more freedom. I prefer the DSA device, so I'm gonna select that. Now you need to make sure you put in the same case details as you did when you submitted it. So in here, I put dense ply. I'm just gonna make sure the same details are there. So dense ply Serona. And my account, my name. Okay, and next step. Now this step is quite important because you're gonna have some patients who have some teeth that are precarious. So if they've got crowns on it or there's bridge abutments or there's implants. So you can then pick and choose and tell them which of these teeth are fragile. So for example, uh, Claire had no problems at all, but let's pick a, an upper left six, for example. Now this uses the FDI system, so it's a number-based system. So one, two, three, four for your quadrants. So you can then highlight which teeth you feel are fragile. So I'll pick three, seven, for example. And then next step, you've got an option for some comments. So if, you've, if you're worried about something or you're extracting a tooth, uh, and you wanna get the device there, you can leave some comments there for Panthera to design. We then move on to the type of splint that we're, we're designing, what type of bite we provided. So have you provided using the George gauge the maximum protrusion and you're gonna let them set it at 60%, so you may give them just a maximum protrusive bite, or you've provided them with a bite in the desired protrusion and that's what we provided. So I'm going to select that. Now, you also have the option here to increase the vertical dimension or keep it as it is. So we used a five millimeter gauge, so I'm gonna keep it as it is. 
There's also, an, the next point is an important question, is the mandibular protrusion straight? Because if there's any deviation, ideally they need to know if, we, if they can correct it, or we can actually have a discussion with them about this. So there is points along this where we can call and discuss with Panthera what we want. So she had mandibular protrusion that was straight, so we're gonna select yes. Now, composite buttons allows for further retention. So if we have any teeth that, you know, they're all convex, there's no real undercuts then we can add if needed. We can give them the choice. And then you have some other options such as elastics are required for this case. Uh, do not cover the upper third molars. So you have some choices here. Uh, you can have prefer upper splint with a distal wrap. So you select what you prefer or you even have a choice to have a conversation with Panthera about this. Now, the next step is customization. Now, generally, I will leave this with Panthera, just use the most optimal values because it makes it a lot easier. I will show you very quickly that if you go to customize, it allows you to change the plateau and the band coverage of the teeth. So you can actually design how much you want the splint to cover. But I think it's much easier at this stage that you just stick with, use the optimal values that Panthera will design for you. And if required to change my preferred design choices, we're just going to give them permission to make the necessary changes to design the device. Panthera are incredibly experienced at this. This is the last, second to last. What file are we sending them? So we've already sent it via the Connect software. So we're going to select intraoral scanner inbox. Next step. At this stage, it's just checking your shipping and billing address. So wherever you're sending it to. Uh, and the billing address is the same, and it gives you a, a total input of what you've actually done. So what are you requesting is all provided in that device. So it's a summary of what you're asking for. So you please check that. There's also a little icon, a pencil icon that allows you to correct it at this stage. Uh, so if there's any change you need to, no to, to note, then please do it at this stage. You've also got a comment box as well. And we just check out. Say, so please do not close this window. It's an important stage. And now that has been sent to Panthera. You have your prescription and your invoice, so please download that and save that. Uh, and this now is with Panthera, and they're going to design this splint for us. As dentists, we don't always see what's going on on the laboratory side. So let's go and see where the magic happens. The Dentsply Serona partnership with Panthera Dental is based on best-in-class precision. When the high precision scans from Prime Scan are transmitted to Panthera Dental, the DSAT appliance is produced at their new state-of-the-art facility in Quebec City. The appliance is designed using next-generation CAD software, developed during 10 years of close collaboration with sleep dentists in North America and Europe. It is then 3D printed in medical grade nylon in a process that uses advanced robotics and AI for optimum speed, precision, hygiene and traceability and the level of quality control that meets the highest regulatory standards in the world. The patient's order is then packaged, ready for dispatch by express courier. The whole process takes just a matter of days from start to finish. The device has now arrived, so this is where it gets exciting. Claire's been booked in for a second appointment to fit the device. So let's open the goodie bag. What you'll see is you'll have a set of compartments and within each of the compartments uh, are the devices. So let's take each one out. So you'll have your resin models. These are fantastic quality resin models. So what we want to do is try the device on the models to make sure they fit. So we have an upper and lower model. And you also have a storage box which the patient will keep the device in and how to keep it clean. All instructions will be given. So we'll try the upper model in first, just to make sure this clicks into place and is nice fit, nice snug and fit. Fantastic, so that all sort of clicks in. Yep, so that goes on the lower and that one goes on the upper. So both fit perfectly together. Okay, we also have the interconnecting locks there, which allow for mandibular protrusion. We also have a, a box that's kept in to clean, so, Panthera provide everything for the patient. So this is then tried in the patient's mouth and we'll give them the instructions on how to gradually protrude the mandible. So these clips are gradually changed every couple of days and each clip 
move the mandible forward about half a millimetre. And we're asking the patient feedback. How do they feel uh, when they're wearing the planks when they wake up in the morning? Certainly initially, as you can imagine, when you put something new in your mouth, it's going to take a couple of days to get used to. Uh, so first couple of days, there may be some element of getting, struggling to get to sleep, but we all adapt to it. So this is then disengaged, it's tried in the mouth, and then it's given to the patient to take home. We will monitor the patient through that process. So this is where I feel like Santa Claus, we're gonna give our gift to the patient. There you go, thank you. Thank you All right, take care. Claire was given the classic DSAD device. So this has two interlocking arms, so it allows for mandibular protrusion in a controlled manner. Panthera also offer a second device, which is the DSAD X3, which shows Panthera constantly evolving and showing their innovation. And this just allows for more freedom, but the principles are exactly the same. So I'm hoping you've seen the decoding of the digital sleep workflow. You've seen the amazing capabilities of PrimeScan, how quickly it scans, how the accuracy is there. You've also seen the fantastic facility at Panthera and how they make a beautiful device. This is a topic that's really close to my heart and that's because I wear one of these devices and it really has improved uh, my sleep. So if this has whet your appetite, please join us on the on-demand area where we'll be delving into the digital sleep workflow with PrimeScan and Panthera in a lot further detail. There'll be a roundtable discussion and we're also just decoding the commercial benefits in our dedicated commercial sessions. Look forward to seeing you then.